Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to talk about some random facts. Just random pieces of information that will be helpful for our next videos when we talk about repetition. And other stuff, of course. Okay, so let me start by declaring a variable called n as an integer. Okay, and initializing the value to 0. Setting it to 0. Okay, so int n equals 0. And then we want to print out that value of n on the screen. We want to debug this and we're supposed to get a zero. Okay. Now if you don't know what I'm talking about right now at this point, then just go back to video number one. Before you do that, uninstall C++ or Visual Studio um, 2008 Express Edition from your computer and then go watch video number one and start all over again. Okay, because you don't know what you're doing. Anyways, um, so once we have zero initialized, we can print it out on the screen. But what if we change the value of n? Oh wait, I just remembered something actually. Yesterday I was watching the last video I made, and in the switch statement, I said that if you have a case, um, a, for instance, you would put a colon right here, okay? Of course, it's not pronounced colon, it's colon, obviously, but uh, because, you know, my name is Khalid also, so I say colon, colon, but, uh, you know, and I keep saying semicolon to my colon. It's actually a colon, so for those people that are thinking, what is he talking about? Don't get confused, it's just, you know, I made a mistake. So, anyways, back to this topic. And yeah, that was I did say we're going to talk about some random stuff today. I'm telling you. Okay, anyways, so what if we changed the value of n before we went on to printing it? What if we made n equals 1? Semicolon. Okay, so let's print that out and see what happens. Or let's debug that and see what happens. Okay, so you get a 1 right there. And that's because the computer goes and sees this statement, n equals 0. And then because C++ works from top to bottom, it goes down and sees n equals 1. So what happens is that in the memory, a 0 is stored in the variable n. But then as we go down, the computer realizes that n is now equal to 1. And n is the same n. If it was a capital N, it would be different. So, you know, a capitalized N is different from small letter N, right? A lowercase n. But this is the same exact N, so it's going to store it in the same exact place. And that's why, and you can only store one value. That's why it replaces the 0 with the 1. So the 0 is out, the out, the 1 is in. Okay, so n equals 1 now, not 0. And then it goes on and it prints n. Okay, so what if, so now you know that, you know, you can change the value throughout the code, which is kind of, you know, obvious. But anyways, if you wanted to even change it to something else, like n equals n plus 1, for instance, okay, what would happen? Okay, this is how it works, n equals 0, then you go down and see that n equals 1 now, Okay, so now the value of n, the latest value of n, is 1. Okay, and then n equals n plus 1. Okay, so n, this n right here, is being, is being taken from this statement, n equals 1. So that's the latest news we have, okay? It's like, say an earthquake hits someplace, right? And then the reporter says... The number of casualties is 15. And then three hours later, you hear that it's 14. Okay? Well, that's a good earthquake because only one person died in three hours. But if that happens, you don't take the value of 13 and say, oh, there's 13 people dead. No, 14 because that's the most updated information. So this is how this works, you know, if, if you needed that example, like you needed it. It's really simple, right? So anyways... So now n over here is 1, because this is the latest value of n. So 1 plus this value, which is 1, 
So 1 plus 1 is 2, and that is stored in the new n. Okay? So now 1 is kicked out of n, and 2 is stored. Okay? That's how it works. And because 2 is stored in n, when we print out n, 2 is going to be printed out. Debug. Start without debugging. Yes, and let's see what happens. There you go. A 2. Okay. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's do something else. So this code right here, n equals n plus 1, can be rewritten as follows. n plus plus. Semicolon. Okay. So this n plus plus is the same as saying n equals n plus 1. All this is saying is take the last n value I have and add 1 to it. Okay. Now if you were talking about adding 2, no, you would just do it this way. Right? This will be better. Right? But if you if you wanted to add one only, you would do it this way. N plus plus. Okay? You can do it, of course, as n equals n plus one. But you know, I'm just telling you that this is another way you can do it because you're gonna be seeing this all over textbooks and if you read, you know, any college material or um any like if you go over to any like websites or anything and read about it, you'll you know, you'll see this used in for loops, while loops, and do while loops a lot, okay? So this is still valid, but this is just another way of writing it, right? So n++, you try to debug that, and you will see the value of 2 printed out, because it's just doing the exact same thing as n equals n plus 1, okay? And you can do it for minus also. This means take the last value of n I have, and subtract 1 from it. So the result would be 0. This is equivalent to saying n equals n minus 1. Okay? So if you debug this, you'll get a value of 0 right here. I know you guys trust me. I don't have to debug it, but I just want to show you. Okay, so um, what else do we have? Yeah, one more thing I wanted to mention. If you have n equals, or n equals n, um, say, plus 3, okay, you can also rewrite that in this form, n plus equals 3, okay? So n equals n plus 3 can be rewritten as this, n plus equals 3, because this basically means n is right here, is the new variable, Okay, and this is the operator addition. We're adding to n itself the value of 3. Okay, so this is just syntax again. This is how you would write it. You can write it this way. This is totally fine. If, if you're confused by this, okay, you can write it this way. But trust me, once you start writing like a lot of lines of code, you'll start tending to want to make shortcuts and make your life easier and faster, and you'll do it this way. If you, I might be wrong, whatever, I don't care if I'm wrong. Like, if you do it your way, if you like doing this, just keep doing it, it's totally fine. I'm just letting you know. Now, if you want to do, say, n multiplied by 3, so you're updating the new value of n, and you're making it n times 3, you can also do that by doing this. Okay? That's, you can do that. So it's basically, whatever you have on your whatever operator you have, you would actually move that to the left side and and put n operator equals and the value you want to add to it. And this can be a variable, this can be anything, and you can have parentheses and play with it and try everything you want. So that's another idea I wanted to um, share with you. Just play with this, you know, see what you can do with it, and watch my next video because we're going to start talking about repetition, which I'm excited for. So go watch it. See ya. Bye. Well, I'm not going to really see you, and you're not going to see me probably. But we'll, we'll talk, right?